Let's take a closer look under the hood of this biometric fingerprint reader demo. In ScriptMaker, we have a variety of scripts. In the first series of scripts are general scripts to perform upon open, close, a close window script, an unlock script, and center the window script. These are really not important to the plugin functionality per se, rather for the navigation and usage of the demo file itself. Then in this section we have global demo buttons. These are scripts that are performed when things like the doc library button is clicked and the product forum button and so forth. Again, not so much for functionality of the plugin itself, but more for the demo. Then here we have the registration related scripts. This register plugin will be triggered from this button here and a plugin checker script. Let's go take a look at that one. This one is a script that determines is the plugin installed and if so what operating mode is the plugin in? Is it unregistered? Is it in demo mode or expired? This script is performed at the beginning of all these other scripts to determine is the plugin installed, is it registered, and so forth. So let's close that for a second. This script here will initialize the libraries that come with the plugin and get FileMaker in a position where it can talk to the biometric reader. So let's take a look at the initialization script. We do some preliminary housekeeping, allow user board off, set error capture on. Here you can see we are performing that plugin checker script. So by the time we get to here, we've determined that the plugin is installed and running, and then we can call our first function. In this case, it's the function called PCFP, which stands for Productive Computing Fingerprint. Initialize is the function, and 500 says that we are going to initialize this with up to 500 fingerprints. The reason why we use zero, not equals, is that this function, if successful, will return a zero. So in one motion, we are calling the function and also determining if that function is returning an error code. So, if this function is unsuccessful, it will return an error and perform this part of the script, which will invoke a dialog here and tell the user what that error is by calling this command, PCFP get last error, and with the parameter text, which means it'll spell out the error in English words. If it is successful, it will simply bring up uh, initialization succeeded dialog ready to use. So you'll see this over and over again when we call our functions. We're actually calling a lot of our functions in an if statement and killing two birds with one stone. We call the function at the same time determining if that function is returning an error or not. So that's the initialize function. That is required once per FileMaker session. Now let's take a look at the enroll functions. This function here, this script, is called enroll a user and we'll locate that here. The official name of the script is called enroll a user and import that user's fingerprints because after we enroll the user into the device, we then pull back the fingerprint indexes for that user. So let's take a look from the top here. We're doing, again, that preliminary housekeeping, allow user abort off, set error capture on, then we perform the plugin checker, again, which just checks to see that the plugin is installed and registered properly. Then we begin prompting for a user ID. We're storing the user ID that you saw in the demo on the previous video in a global field. And we use that global field here in this dialog box. You can see here, we're calling it user ID and we're using that global field. So that just gives us an empty placeholder to, for the user to put in an ID in a dialog. Now in your own scripts, you don't necessarily want to call a dialog box and give the user a choice on what the user ID is. You really want to either call from a unique first and last name combination or a record ID or something unique that will properly identify a user. The reason we call this dialog is simply for the purposes of demonstration. Okay, then we begin the validation of that user ID. There's some strict validation options and requirements that we need to be aware of. So the first thing we're looking for is it must have a value. Certainly can't enter, enter a blank ID. So it must not be empty. We're checking that here in this part of the script. Then we're checking that the data is alphanumeric. Spaces are OK, but high ASCII characters or any symbols other than alphanumeric are not allowed. 
So we validate that there. Then we validate that the length is not greater than 32 characters. And once it passes that, then we actually call the enroll function. And here you can see we're actually using a variable. And the function is the PCFP enroll user. And we're simply saying, this is the ID that I'd like to enroll. This ID is representative of a person or an individual, not their finger. And we're storing that in a variable called df. Then we say, is df not equal to 0, meaning did that succeed or fail? If it failed, we throw up a dialog and then explain what the error is and clear the user ID for another pass at it. We're calling this function PCFP delete user in the event that one or more fingers were already entered in a previous enrollment. By deleting the user here, we prevent a user from being created. Because if you enroll a user twice and their finger is already enrolled, you'll want to delete the one you're working on. This would only happen if you allow your users to enter the same user twice, which is already not a good practice. We do this here for demonstration purposes because the, the typical developer will use their own fingers multiple times. So it's very likely you'll run into a scenario where you're going to register, in my case, my fingers several times while I test this plugin. So this really would not be used in your solution ultimately. OK, now the user is enrolled into the device, and we're now going to capture back the enrolled finger indexes. So that's where we begin this process. And we get the fingers for user, and we supply it with the ID. Now that they're enrolled, we'd like to get those fingerprints back. Again, if we have an error, we call this function and show the error, and we clear the field. And then in this step, we receive a space-separated list of those finger indexes, those fingerprint indexes. And then we can parse those and create records from them so that we can have in FileMaker the container data, which is representative of the digital fingerprint, along with the index number and, of course, the user ID. So all of this logic here is we're creating a new window, we're going to the layout where the users are, and we're actually creating a new user now as a record in FileMaker because it's been enrolled properly. Now we have to record it in FileMaker that it's been enrolled. And we create the user, and then we go immediately to create the fingerprints for that user, and that's what this logic does here. We go to the layout where the fingerprints are stored, and we do some standard FileMaker logic where we create new records, set those records with the fingerprint user ID and the fingerprint index, which we've parsed. And you can see we're parsing it using this logic here, get the value of the fingerprint list. And we're using a variable that increments by one each time to get that. And you can see the increment down here. Another important thing to note that we're getting is we're importing the user by putting in the user ID and the fingerprint index. So this function here actually imports and stores the fingerprint digital data in a container field in FileMaker. And we are calling that container field fingerprint in the fingerprints table. After we've gone through all the fingerprints, we close the window, commit the record, refresh it. And that's what you see here. You'll have the user record here and the user's associated fingerprints here. A quick look under the hood at the relationships, and you'll see that main is my main interface file. Users is this portal here, and their related fingerprints simply relating by the ID that we've captured on that dialog when we first enrolled. OK, so that is enroll a user. This view fingerprints simply changes the ID and displays the fingerprints for that person. This button does that as well. 
and you can see this is Mark II with their fingerprints. This function called get finger indexes will simply display in the dialog the enrolled fingerprint indexes for that user and we display it in a dialog for demonstration purposes. You may never need to display this to a user. It might be something you just want to have on hand as a handy function to say, if I have this user, show me the fingers enrolled. And it might be a verification technique. So here we're just showing the, this is the dialog here. The command to actually pull it is right here. PCFP get fingers for user and we simply give it the user ID and it gives me the indexes. We learned in another video that here we're showing a handy picture of the finger indexes and how they lay out on the hands. So that's that. Delete a user is pretty straightforward as well. This is done in a single command which is PCFP delete user and you give it the user ID and it will go to the device, delete the user, and all related fingerprints for that user in one motion. Delete all users, pretty straightforward there as well. Essentially the same thing, except it deletes all the users. There are no function parameter calls on this. It's just delete all users, and every user in the current session will be deleted.